September the 17th. And it's 2023, and I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durford. I hope you're doing well after this weekend. This is almost over. We're going to cover species die off that are um, can easily be attributed. To Japan's radioactive fallout. And so the species die offs are worldwide that we're going to be talking about, just like the radioactive fallout. The fallout. This model is based on 20 days of radioactive fallout. And at 20 days, you can clearly see the whole planet is covered in radioactive fallout. And the fallout came from multiple reactors. It was four of them. We've never seen that in history. And at the top of each building, you see depictions at the top of these models of these boiling water reactor buildings. The reactor cores are actually at the top of the buildings, and so are the fuel pools. And to your left, the building is actually gone. To the right, coming up any second is the detonation of reactor 3 that's the fuel pool but they built that contraption over the stone that should have been leveled and they've done the same thing with reactor 4 where they built a contraption over that but the building doesn't exist and that these structures don't physically touch the building underneath it right it doesn't physically touch it and, and look how fragile the building bizarre structure they put there. Now the idea of the structure was to pretend that inside it looks like the building to your left instead of what it actually looks like. And it's pretty obvious to the picture to the right that that should have been razzed the rest of the way to the ground. This is four sides of reactor fours before they leveled it. And so they cleaned that up with remote control um, cranes and everything else and uh, destitute and the victims of society. Ended up with that. And you can see that first piece is as tall as the stump that's left. That should have been razzed right to the ground. There's nothing left of those particular two reactors. Uh, these, uh, just the reactors are 100 times more fuel than Chernobyl. And at the top of the building, each of those fuel pools have six reactor cores of pure uranium, pure plutonium, unlike Chernobyl, which was mostly graphite. So they rolled out the medias uh, worldwide, and this is just four of the American, British, Australian medias that have come out to convince you that the building to the left was perfectly fine. And they perpetrated that crime. This is 100% crimes against humanity we're talking about. They put these two contraptions, I guess, because that's how you can really call it. They're not functional, over buildings that don't exist anymore. And that if you took both of these buildings and stack them on top of each other, they're not going to be as high as that piece there is that piece right there that's four parts high and that's the same that's reactor one at the fukushima which has the same attributes where it lost the reactor cores and all the fuel pools and so did reactor two okay so the radioactive fallout in this model is about 27 days the entire planet is covered so the industry said well we've never had you know, multiple reactors and fuel pools catch fire and detonate and release their entire 40-year inventories into the environment. These are catastrophic pulse events. There's a concerted effort in your universities, your medias, and your governments to lead you away from the reality, right, by pretending they're in buildings that don't even exist should terrify you. But it didn't stop just with the medias and the universities. 
per se. Taiwan uh, was a really interesting one. And so was so Korea. A movement by Mythbusters, which is in Taiwan, a community of pro-nuclear scientists, pro-nuclear scientists. Well, is, there, is there any other kind of nuclear scientist or student in pro-nuclear, wonder? Help sway the public over nuclear power in Taiwan after Fukushima meltdown. They don't even, these are nuclear academics, they don't even call it meltdowns, they call it meltdown. A move and uh, nuclear mythbusters is an organization created by the nuclear community and mostly this nuclear physicist, I uh, can't remember his first name, but his last name is Hang. And he went on a hunger strike because he wanted to put Fukushima nuclear wasteland food on the ballot uh, for a vote across the country because it was banned. And he succeeded. Uh, fortunately, the ban didn't uh, get broken. But two years later, after the referendum, just removed all restrictions without another referendum. So a movement by the nuclear mythbusters, community pro-nuclear scientists and students, helped sway thousands, thousands of online members of the group with science and engineering backgrounds so there was thousands, uh, one media had reported it as around 2,200 just nuclear students or faculty or academics from universities, not counting all the other graduate students and everything participated, had spammed the internet for years to promote nuclear power and to downplay Fukushima. And they had tons of help. Um, There's been ongoing for 80 years, this 80-year deception has now come to fruition and has come back to bite everybody and everything on the planet. This is a professor of Department of Nuclear Quantum Engineering, so surely they can bring something useful to the conversation, you would hope. The professor of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea says the nuclear meltdowns is the equivalent of throwing three sh cubes of sugar into the ocean. They're equating that and multiple nuclear meltdowns with three cubes of sugar. Um, and that the total emissions from multiple nuclear meltdowns that have lost decades of reactor cores and running reactor cores that dwarf Chernobyl. Well, Ch uh, Fukushima was bigger than all nuclear accidents worldwide combined from the one place. And, and it can be argued that just one of these buildings has that particular attribute because they had decades of reactor cores at the top of the building. So to come out and claim that only 2.2 grams is all that got out of buildings that don't even exist anymore. It's too much to bear. How can we ever trust an uh, academic of any discipline after this? Because obviously you can't. Why, why uh, should you know, anybody send their children to universities to be turned into monsters to be weaponized against the species and humanity? And uh, just a final headline before we jump into it. I just kind of, in case you haven't been here or don't understand the enormity of this equation, I have to make sure that you have some foundation that's proper to make sure you're on the right page. So Raphael Grossi, he's, he's, ju he's not the chief, he's just uh, the hand ringer gets his picture taken. but. Uh, he takes, he gives his marching orders from UN itself. I would like to emphasize the release of the treated water stored at Fukushima, which is simply not true. The buildings are actually gone. Is a national decision by the government of Japan. In other words, the International Atomic Energy Agency is just a fictional organization. It has no sovereignty over any country. It can't impose or compel a country 
to do anything. And that this report is neither a recommendation nor an endorsement. So what's your point of existence then, see? And that's a question, obviously, the media has viciously and violently misrepresented every facet of nuclear for its entire legacy. Okay, so... Such difficult stories to tell, and I apologize, but I had to make sure that everybody was, you know, had the right footing and uh, um, was on the right equation before we get into the rest of it. Deep Sea Octopus Garden off California coast is the largest known octopus gathering in the world. They sent down um, these incredibly complicated uh, ro uh, remote control vehicles deep into the ocean trenches. And there's at least 20,000 female octopuses gathered to tend their eggs in frigid water two miles deep. And they curl their tentacles over their heads to brood for almost two years, and then they die. Now, I've seen that in real life as a diver, because I was a commercial diver for many, many years. Uh, and I had always wondered, I thought they were dead. I had never seen that many, by the way, in the one spot. But I have seen quite a few over the years that looks that is very similar to this, that I had taken as had died and were decomposing, maybe. you got to realize you're underwater, you're in a hostile environment, you're working six hours a day, and you see a lot of things. But I distinctly remember seeing that, but not in that big of a capacity. This is two miles deep, apparently. Octopus Garden, they discovered in 2018, and it's the largest known gathering of octopuses in the world. I have fond memories of a, of a major halibut that was probably 200 pounds, what they call a walter, in our country. And which means everybody on the boat should get a gaff and get prepared to bring this huge uh, halibut on the boat. And I'm working, I can't remember how deep it was, but I, I, I wasn't wearing fins. I'm wearing probably 70 pounds of lead. I'm boots on the ground, right? And I'm dragging around a 900-pound bag with me that has a flotation device so it keeps it off the floor, stops it from hooking up. I was picking uh, sea urchins, food harvesting. And I had seen a movement at the corner of my eye. And I turned and watched this halibut, and I seen an octopus was out in the open. And this octopus comes in, or halibut comes in, grabs the octopus, and tears off one of its legs. and. They were tumbling across the ocean floor, so there was these little nuclear explosions going up in the air from the sediment. It was really something to see with your own two eyes. And then all of a sudden, in all this mist of all these little mud bombs that have floated up from contact with the violent fight, I seen the octopus going one way, silhouetted against the surface, and the halibut going the other way. The halibut had a octopus's leg, and it was just, these are giant Pacific octopuses, but 150 pounds we're talking about. This one was pretty big. And so it had this long leg tailing from its mouth as it's swimming uh, away and down into the depths again. And we had, because I was right on the edge of rock and mud, and that's where a lot of shrimp and crabs like to hang out, which is great feeding grounds for halibut. And there was the octopus swimming away, shooting away, thrown uh, with a leg missing in the silhouette, basically, is the best way to explain it. It was really something to see it in real life. And underwater, everything is 25% bigger. So it was I remember just being in awe. Researchers carefully positioned probes to measure the water temperatures which is as high as 51 degrees uh, compared to the surrounding water was 35 degrees. 
So there was a vent there that was heating up the water, and this is where they set up shop. Colder water leads to longer incubation periods for the octopus previously uh, studies found, including one octopus that brooded for four and a half years. That's quite the gestation period. Uh, these are stunning pictures. I mean, we just we're just discovering that over the last couple of years. And uh, what you're seeing there is the giant plume sea anemone. They come in multiple colors, by the way. They're missing from the tidal zones now, due to Fukushima radioactive fallout. And four and a half years is the longest gestation period. of any animal on earth and they don't eat during the so-called brooding where they're raising their eggs it's really special isn't it this is off the california coastline insect decline directly linked to human activities identified significant declines in insect populations across Europe. Well, you know, people don't occupy all of Europe. You have all kinds of wetlands, all kinds of grasslands. You have all kinds of ecosystems, all kinds of forests. Most of them link to human activity that affects the insects' habitats. But what, what's going on, though, is it's symmetrical through all the land. And you can't blame that on lights because lights don't cover the entire country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In recent years, post Fukushima, concerns about declining insect abundance and diversity have increased in many regions in Europe and North America. Uh, this one got nothing to do with Fukushima, but it's a great story. Giant sinkhole found in China contains an untouched ancient forest, home to a pristinely preserved ancient forest. And I, I just put that in there to remind myself and others of how we have so much to learn, but we have destroyed the ecosystem now permanently because of perpetual emissions from the disease factories known as nuclear power plants in the nuclear industry. The sinkhole now is not just nuclear power plants that are radioactive emissions are from. They're from all the many, the 9,000 facets of the nuclear industry. So it's 1,000 feet in length, 500 feet wide, and plunges down 630 feet, approximately 176 million cubic feet. It's pretty special. So, um, this picture, I put that there to remind myself to tell you guys that um, some some insects were noticing lately, like mosquitoes, which are uh, feeder, what I call feeder insects. They feed fish and frogs and dragonflies and uh, birds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? They're, and, but if these species gets affected, then the 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 mosquitoes become prolific because they don't have any checks and balances, right? And they're designed to be prolific breeders to feed an uh, enormous amount of species. And so, I was reading a story about somebody that had used ceramic dragonflies on their patios and never had a problem with insects after. And I was actually thinking of uh, making t-shirts with dragonflies on to see if that would stop mosquitoes because mosquitoes are definitely a problem so the whale die off they're trying in america they're trying to blame it on windmills but it's been going on long before the windmills came along and windmills have been in many different countries and we haven't seen the same statistics or any statistics that and so this is a total distraction by the biggest nuclear industry in the world, which is the Americans, to try to slow down any descending industries. Turkey's largest lake is drying up because of drought. 
leaving behind a stinky, polluted mud that's causing a bird massacre. Uh, so Fukushima was the tipping point. And what it done was it, ba it killed off the bases, the food chain, the oxygen chain, the carbon sequestering chain, which regu helps regulate the temperatures of the ocean, right? And when you take that out of the equation, um, you're talking about, by the way, you're talking about particles that are pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. So they, they affect all the species. But they also, in increments over 80 years, have now changed the atmosphere, the temperature of the planet, by shocking the ecosystem so it's not functional, it doesn't regulate the temperatures. So now the oceans are hotter and when the winds come over. But in the rivers and lakes and estuaries, they carry a lot of radiation from the fallout to certain areas like these big lakes. And so when you do dry out, you have all this radiation in the sediment on top of that. And in forest fires, you'll liberate the radiation back into the environment that's sequestered in your forest. So it's something that keeps coming but never goes away. This is dried up to due to rising temperatures and drought, which are one and the same in many ways. And the retreating water line is exposing polluted water, killing off birds and droves, causing a bird massacre. And I believe these are important migratory places. And so there's many different facets in nuclear that a lot of people don't put into the equation. You should have this one into the equation. Other bodies of water around the world have been drying up as a result of climate change. Climate change is 80 years of radioactive fallout. Let me explain it to you very quick. I got a nice, neat, neat way to for people to comprehend this. So gas, oil, and coal emissions, you're not going to see models of gas, oil, and coal, where this is 19 days later, the whole planet is covered in radioactive fallout. But you won't see any models of gas, oil, or coal emissions, carbon, where they show you models like that. And gas, oil, and coal emissions, which they call carbon, which you can't exist or nothing else on the planet without carbon. Um, and so the gas, oil, and coal emissions don't pulse energy every second. They don't make plumes that covers the entire planet, but nuclear does. And this is just a single event, and after 19 days, you got a plume, think of a snowstorm that covers the planet in about 20 days. It never stops snowing, and the snow never goes away. So get rid of the word snow and replace it with radiation, and that it pulses energy at the, almost at the speed of light every second, every atom, for millions of years is the best way to put it in the equation. And all the fuel pulls at all the nuclear power plants have this exact same attribute, by the way. They're still splitting atoms into the environment. Lioness at Peru Zoo dies of avian flu. This is, why are they testing animals at zoos in a country where they've never ever seen any of these so-called attributes? The highly pathogenic avian influenza in a private laboratory said so literally, you, you know, why don't you retest it? This is the only land mammal in Peru to be affected this year. But two sea lions in the countries were also affected, which are not land mammals per se. So why... You know, first off, you don't make a statement like this without double-checking it, because first off, it's a private laboratory. You definitely want to double-check that result. Why? Wh how did a animal in the middle of nowhere, per, right, of context of the, the so-called disease, end up with that particular virus? Now they're saying it died of the avian influenza. So if it was so infected that it died at a zoo where the animals can't escape from around it, how come the other ones weren't dying? In numbers, how many whales? Okay, so I went back 
2014, 15, and 16, and I was looking for a lot of stories that I didn't cover because I was on the ocean doing research expeditions for four to five months a year during that period for six years. And I had read, covered a lot of stories way back in the day, but they took down my YouTube channel when I was out looking for spiders two years ago uh, with no strikes or anything on my account, no emails explaining why. They just took my site down because the spiders were missing from the interior here. And same thing on the west coast, we're on the east coast at the current time. And one of the stories I was seeking out was the pilot whales back in 2014, 2015, 2016. And that back in those days in Australia, New Zealand, places like this, the reports were that the stomachs were empty and that they had starved to death. But I, I'm not sure, I'm looking for that line where the narrative changed, where they stopped mentioning the health of the whales that were uh, dying on their coastlines, right? The, after Fukushima, whales refused to stop dying on the coastline of Australia and New Zealand, which is the turning point. So this one, a lot of these stories are 2014, or almost all of them are going to be 2000, certainly all of them from here on are 2014, 2015, 2016. But because I was I've done different years, um, I, I didn't have time to line everything up because the, these videos are very difficult videos to get ready and start recording. They're very, uh, a huge amount of material and I have limited time if I want to make my live, my normal live time was 10 p.m. my time, but now I have to record it, convert it, upload it, wait for it to render before it shows up. And so there's a f I have to work an extra five hours a day now, give or take an hour. Five sperm whales died and washed up on the beaches in the east of England within days of each other. And um, as, now, polar whales are one of the whales that have been known in the past to go up on the land in groups. But it's not like it's constant everywhere. And if, if every time a pilot whale got sick, the whole group committed suicide, there would be no more pilot whales, right? So it's not like it happens all the time, like they try to get you to believe, because it's happening so much post-Fukushima. But if it happened every time an animal got sick, there would be no more species left. Whales are stranded on the UK beaches at a rate of more than five a month, according to the most recent figure, from 2014, but why ain't you going back pre-nuclear meltdowns? Why are you doing your post-nuclear meltdowns? Because that's when we're seeing the spikes is after the meltdown. There were 66 reports of stranded whales, 16 of which underwent post-mortem examinations and starvation, starvation, and including attacks from other creatures were the most common cause. Well, what other creatures are attacking whales and sperm whales at that? Oh, that's right, none. The starvation. Found a whales died of a lack of recent feeding. Recent. First off, like they got to travel six or seven thousand miles, ten thousand kilometers, before they become emaciated, before they lose all that 10 inches of blubber gets down to one, two, or three inches, see? So to say recent feeding is completely dishonest or just ignorance, and most likely a, a lot of both. They say the shallow North Sea between Scotland and Norway can act as a natural trap for whales, but that's simply not true pre-Fukushima. Not only that, whales are not stupid, for goodness sakes. They have incredible sense of direction. Eight dead sperm whales, this 2016 again. So each of these stories, uh, try to spot the date yourselves because I might forget to remind you. Eight dead sperm whales found on a German beach 
You know the odds pre-Fukushima two whales showing up on the same beach are zero? It's zero. The odds of many whales showing up in the beach post-Fukushima is normal. It's expected. And because you travel long distances, obviously these whales had starved to death. Were found dead on the other side of North Sea 12. Five sperm whales stranded on a Dutch beach. Are we seeing a pattern here in sperm whales, I wonder? Six sperm whales die in a rare mass beaching in Australia. That's pretty incredible. Um, set of headlines for 2016 so far. A rare mass stranding. A rare, a rare. Look up the word rare for the pro nuclear community. Why not? We're not sure why they beached. The theory is one was ill, moved to shallow water, and called to the federal, uh, fellow pod members who followed it in. Yeah, but in all these different countries that I just showed you, you really think that's what happened? And if that was normal, then there would be no more sperm whales, would there? When one gets sick, the rest of them dies. Animal welfare manager said it was too rare. It's rare. It's rare. It's not normal. Two more sperm whales watched shot up dead on a Dutch beach in a rare North Sea, in a rare North Sea beaching. We're hearing those words over and over and over and over and over. The others became stranded further north. A group like this is even rarer, and it, the North Sea is too shallow for large, deep-diving animals because sperm whales will dive up to two hours, up to, say, two kilometers deep. Four dead sperm whales wash up on a British beach. Anybody but me seeing a pattern here? A week after similar deaths across the North Sea in Germany and the Netherlands, the third dead whale appeared on Sunday. And we informed the receiver of Rick. Because <coughs> the Queen at that time owned all dead whales. And animals that wash up on your coastline. Now it's Charles the crazy. It is 10 years since a northern bottlenose whale swam up the Thames in central London bringing thousands to the riverbanks to see the extremely rare sight. And now it's normal to see whales wa uh, swim up and die. Study examines the hard reality that no pollen means no seeds. Or radioactive pollen probably means no seeds too, right? Because Fukushima's got radioactive pollen being created worldwide. But it's 80 years of emissions, but Fukushima was the tipping point. It was a massive pulse event. And they're using tobacco plants to artificially get the, the plants to create seeds. But why are they using tobacco plants, of all things? Experts blame El Nino for dead sea creatures on Chile's beaches. The beautiful beaches of Chile have been a draw for tourists and the salmons, the whales, the sardines, the clams that are washing up on the shores lately have made them a lot less touristly. Scientists believe El Nino is to blame. Well, you can believe anything. You can believe fairies came down and done it, but it's, you gotta have facts. Just this month, and this is this month, just this month, about 8,000 metric tons of sardines washed up at the mouth of a river, which is not where they shouldn't be there. Thousands of dead clams piled up on the coast in Chile. And early in the year, a surge in algae in the water choked an estimated 40,000 metric tons of salmon. In the Los uh, Lagos region to death, it's equivalent to about 12% of their annual production. We have red tide every year in northern Chile, but this time it reaches further north and affects the bivalve populations like clams and mussels and oysters and scallops and razorbacks and gooey ducks. And they have never been 
exposed like this to algae, which is created by the loss of the phytoplankton, which is one of the regulators of the ecosystem. The marine deaths reach the shore, which is due to Fukushima fallout. The marine deaths reach the shores of Santa Maria Island, where cuttlefish have washed up into the thousands. And different beaches in the center of the country had to be closed as a notorious Portuguese man of war jellyfish, which are unusually foreign to the area, began floating nearby with almost 2,500 miles of Pacific coastline. Now, the, the Portuguese man of war jellyfish, they have tentacles typically that are 20 to 40 feet long. And growing up as a kid in the south west coast uh, of an island out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we encountered them um, much of the year. They would wrap themselves around the trawl and gill nets. And back in those days, we were barbarians. We just had cotton gloves if we were lucky. And so all and your hands, all your, all the cracks in your hands were wide open all year long from working in this environment and bleeding. You would soak your hands in salt water, of all things, each morning, and so that you can eat your breakfast with a spoon. I'm talking like 13 years old on. I was like that all the time. And um, we go out in the ocean 3.30 in the morning, come back 5, 6, 7 in the evening, clean up the boat, bait up the gear, go to bed, get up and do it again six days a week, right? And so we used to have a five-gallon bucket there so you can dip one of your hands at a time to get the jellyfish off your hands because it would sting so much it would make you cry. And I still have heartbreaks about that. So 2016... 333, it was 337 was the final number. Or no, this was dead mink whales by Japan in 2016. Japan was still out there slaughtering everything because it doesn't care about anything. It, they really don't. They just poisoned our planet and they're going to go out and exterminate whatever they can find alive. They returned with 103 males and 230 female whales. And most of these which were pregnant. But in Chile, in 2000, it was 2015, I thought it was, when these whales showed up. That's 2016. They had found 337 dead whales. It's not one of the biggest... Beachings. It's the biggest beaching in history that has been surpassed many times since. And the side whale feeds on microscopic animals. It's not one of the largest stranding worldwide. It's the largest. It's the largest stranding ever. Period. Recorder. Uh, these are not generally very thick whales. They're big. They're like 20 tons or something. But they're generally not big, type thick type whales. But when you look at their tails, you can certainly tell whether they were emaciated or not. Tragic and shocking, the event went down as the largest stranding known to science. Uh, and again, right, they'll say pilot whales are the only species that are known to strand in groups. But I'm showing you... Sperm whales are in all many different countries in a short period of time of each other stranding and dying. What they call stranding is, for the most part, dying, particularly when you're talking about the larger creatures that you can't uh, artificially help get back into the ocean. The largest stranding known to man are the humans. They are large, bluish gray whales and grow 64 feet and weigh 50 tons. 50 tons, wow. They can swim 31 miles per hour and can live up to 70 years. The scientific expedition counted 305 bodies and 32 skeletons, which implies they've been dying up there for quite a while. Not all whales are going to wash up on the coastline, so it's assumed around 3,300 died. The cause of the death of the whales is unknown, but human intervention has been ruled out. 
337 beaches. They probably died at sea. We don't know exactly where, but they didn't just die by stranding. Well, why didn't they? Because it's never been recorded in history, see? But they did die at sea, which has never been um, documented either. Like, you know, 10% is the consensus of what we're going to find. It's just 10%. The University of Chile was part of the team. They probably died at sea. The scientific expedition, the first 37 beach whales were found in April. They didn't just die by stranding. Well, they all, they all didn't just wash up in the same place. If you died at sea, they would have spread out over the entire coastline. These were all found in the same place. But see, when as soon as someone s you get a story and you say they're from a university, you're almost forced to ignore them, because we know now, after all these years of doing this, that professors are the most dangerous creatures in, that we have on the entire planet. They'll slaughter everything so they can pretend they're still professors, so they can molest your children. Whale C S I, and I just despise stuff like that. Why sperm whales are washing up dead on the British shores? Well, what about all the other spots I just showed you in that same time frame? Slicing cleanly through two inches of skin and blubber. Well, the blubber should be around 10 inches. It may have just come too close to shore. Well, it doesn't work that way. Whales are not like stupid. They're not running up on shore pre-Fukushima regularly. There was like ship strikes going on around, I'm not sure, like 25 a year or something, uh, ship strikes. That's the generally the ones that were washing up pre-Fukushima. A mass stranding of sperm whales has puzzled scientists with a total count of six. But I mean, you know, like there's around 10,000 gray whales died in the last five years. They never died of ship strikes because the total of ship strikes and since 1978 recorded worldwide or reported worldwide, not necessarily died from that event, but reported, was around 1,200 ship strikes. So you can't put that in the equation of 10,000 gray whales that have died and gone missing or have been found washed up on the coastline. I know there's, we got one headline where there's 70 emaciated gray whales in just a couple of weeks washed up. The majority of them sink, you know. So there's an infinitely bigger number to put into the tallies. The mass stranding of sperm whales has puzzled degenerate scientists. With a total count of six washed up in the British beaches, the biggest in a century. Well, they haven't even been recording it for a century on top of that. They just lie. Uh, the editors will put in shadows of doubt, you know. This is part of a much bigger event. At least 29 have been found on the coast of UK, the Netherlands, and Germany. Another likely cause of death is the whales simply got lost because, you know, they're big stupid animals, Dana. It doesn't work that way. They, they have incredible sense of direction. If they're somewhere they're not supposed to be, cause it's because they're, you can blame it on... Like, the only thing we can consistently blamed us on his Fukushima, right? The, um, the uptick, the spike in these die-offs are post-Fukushima. The, the weather events are post-Fukushima. The die-off in the insects, the birds, everything else, are, all of these are unprecedented and they're all post-Fukushima. Whale death near Anchorage, uh, Glacier Bay, prompts an investigation. That's uh, polar bears or grizzly bears. There's grizzly bears feeding on a whale. It's going to take them a while to chew through that big boy. Researchers trying to determine what caused the death of three large whales found along the Alaska coastline within a single week in late June. Diminished fat reserves, which means it's not consuming enough food. Well, it's got to go 10,000 kilometers before it gets to that stage. Diminished fat reserve, a.k.a. emaciated. 
If these recent deaths are related to the dozens of whale deaths in the Gulf of Alaska last year, 2015 strandings were labeled as an unusual mortality event that has now encompassed the majority of the species. A pack of killer whales encircle and jostle a family's boat off Newfoundland, which is where I'm currently doing research. A 67-year-old retired fisherman never seen an orca in East Coast waters, and suddenly five or well, they are here sometimes, not very often, but we have seen them here. And suddenly five or six of them were nudging their 15, 16 foot boat. At first he thought they were being playful, but his boat swayed back and forth. And he started to wonder what would happen if he landed in the water. Well, they do this with uh, seals too on ice floes. They'll, they'll get it rocking. Surrounded on all sides, he steered his boat towards the shore until the orcas finally lost interest. After recovering from the half an hour encounter, he set sail for another area that didn't manage to catch any cod. So if there's nothing out there for him to catch, <laughs> it might explain why the whales are looking at them differently. Hundreds of sea lions wash up dead in Chile. That's the same place, the same year of uh, when the 337 same whales all washed up in the same place. More than 100 dead sea lions, most of them newborns, washed ashore, but there was uh, much, uh, young adults and full adults there too. And it's happening along the entire coast of northern Chile and in Peru and neighbors to the north. We could be talking about hundreds of sea lions washing up ashore dead in the entire regions. Well, Right now, there's a 3,500. I'll, I'll bring up that story in a second, maybe. We got a little too much to get through. The entire region. Concerns the vast majority of the dead sea mammals are newborns, though some juveniles and adults were found. And some of them still have their umbilical cords attached. Food sources are to blame for the death, so they starve to death, is what they're saying. The warm water doesn't have the same nutrients of phytoplankton than colder water has. And the phytoplankton is important for the sardines and the anchovies that the sea lions thrive on. In other words, sea lions seem to be starving to death because the food chain has been disrupted by Fukushima perpetual radioactive fallout. So they were dying of starvation. Why didn't they say that at the beginning? Also, he says overfishing is aggravating the problem because it dramatically reduces the feeding option for sea lions. No, no, they, they would have found enough to stay alive, but uh, they, they won't starve to death. The fishermen can't catch everything. Phytoplankton is important because it feeds sardines and anchovies. So they starved to death. The bodies, they also found the bodies of two other animals, maybe whales. Uh, officials also blame these deaths in a disruption in the food chain. So they're claiming those also died of starvation. But uh, the South American fur seal, which seems to be surviving the disruption of the food chain, those can swim much deeper and find fish that are not present in shallow water. This is a 2023 story. These small cookie cutter sharks sank an inflatable catamaran and sparked a dramatic uh, rescue. So the cookie cutter sharks, I believe are warm water sharks, tropical water, and they attach themselves to whales and stuff and they will spin their body and cut it like a little cookie amount of flesh. And so a uh, pontoon had some of those resemblance. Very small, one to 1.4 feet, but took down a great big catamaran. Beluga deaths 2016. Beluga deaths continue to mystify and worry. This is not too far from where I'm to. Uh, so the St. Lawrence goes up the interior of the country. So it's the open ocean. It goes up the interior and all the everything on the west side 
of the Rocky the Cascades were washed down through the country, eventually to the St. Lawrence. So the radioactive fallout, anything that ends up in, in the water tables washing down towards the typical Atlantic Ocean, uh, the majority of it's gonna show up in the St. Lawrence. Where the belugas are having their newborns. Of the 14 carcasses last year, three were pregnant females, six were newborn calves, and one uh, had both sexes, which is typical of radiation poisoning, by the way. In 2014, there was 11 carcasses found, six were young or newborns. In 2013, there were 17 dead belugas, two years after Fukushima, four of which was babies, and so, these stories are post Fukushima stories that, and again, you see these attributes where they say, well, we've never seen that pre Fukushima. They don't say those words, but that's what they're alluding to. They've never seen a pre Fukushima, they've seen a post Fukushima. Necropsies performed on dead whales show the adult females were either pregnant or had just given birth. The babies found showed no sign of disease or trauma leading to the collusion they died of starvation. Uh, in beluga, the time is to have the chemicals affect the thyroid glands. Guess what else affects the thyroid glands? Radioactive fallout. And Canada has 18 reactors. Their spillage all comes down to St. Lawrence, too. Fisheries and Oceans Canada estimated no fewer than 900 belugas in the estuary. And 15 years ago, there was 1,000. A century ago, there was 10,000. But the nuclear power plants have destroyed that whole estuary. There's a, what they call the Thousand Islands up there too. It was incredible, unbelievable, unique ecosystem that got destroyed by all the releases from the Canadian Kandu reactors. They can't even contain the tritium releases. It's stunning, the Mount Watamara. This is a seven year old story. Mystery absence of humpback whales in Hawaii has experts scratching their heads. More than 10,000 humpbacks make the winter journey from Alaska to water off Hawaii. Humpback whales have been slow to return to Hawaii as December usually marks the start of the season. Well, the ones that are showing up are emaciated a lot of the times. The whales have been difficult to spot. This isn't a concern. One theory was that something like this happened as the whales increase. It's a product of their success. Uh, every time I hear that statement, I just really despise these people. Who was surprised how few the animals he saw by responding to a call about a distressed calf on Christmas Eve. We've just seen a handful of whales instead of 10,000. They come from Alaska where they starved to death and phyto they eat phytoplankton. It's a, it's a dirt, and as we know now, since Fukushima, that's the most vulnerable species. One of the, I should say, that's one of the first species what we see with huge reproduction and die-offs is the phytoplankton species. They're competing against each other for food sources. Well, it's simply not true. It's like saying there's more gray whales when 10,000 have died, but there's no way to quantify that there was more, because there's not. They all died of starvation. They don't die of starvation if they can find some food. They died of starvation if they don't find any food for 10,000 kilometers. A similar incident has taken place in 1973 when 147 of them were stranded. That was during the middle, not even the middle, the that was at some of the peak, almost peak, nuclear testing, perpetual radioactive fallout. And it's hard to comprehend it. So the French Polynesians, the French nuclear testing they'd done for 12 years, the fallout was equal to a Hiroshima, or Nagasaki rather, plutonium bombs, was equal to a Nagasaki bomb every week for 12 years. That's how much fallout we're talking about. 
Does anybody really think the animals and mammals and whales and all of them are immune? In an unusual phenomenon, it's unusual. Rum there was rumors claiming that the beaching could be due to climate change, which is climate change is 80 years of perpetual radioactive fallout. This model is based on top left-hand corner is 20 days of radioactive fallout from Japan. It never goes away on top of that. It never stops pulsing energy every second, and we never stop releasing it into the environment from over 400 disease factories worldwide on top of that. Stranding of these whales is rare. They don't swim close to the coast. They're talking about polar whales. Strandings are rare because they don't normally come close to the coast. They survived a few days, but later all died. Dead sperm whale found in... Uh, Hong Kong? Is that China, I think? Yeah, China. Hong Kong. Some more dead sperm whales. They're usually deep water animals. They shouldn't be there. Dead dolphins. Whales wash up on area beaches. No coincidence at all. No, they're not connected. Why would they be connected? It's normal. Florida. Which is right at ground zero for fallout, by the way. There were three dead dolphins found on area beaches this week and, and another one. So that's not normal. Another was found in St. John's River. They don't like rivers. And windmills are out there killing all the whales like the pro-nuclear communities trying to get you to believe. Carcasses graffitied after five dead sperm whales. It's another five. As big as a bus, washed or bigger than a bus, washes up on English beaches. When you see the tail that skinny, that pretty well tells you all you need to know. That's incredible skinny tail. Man's fault. It's nuclear industry's fault. The carcass of five dead huge sperm whales washed up on the shores of northern east England in four days. In four days. Um their stomachs are empty. Their stomachs, they, they, were, they died of starvation. Their stomachs are empty. Fukushima. Somebody actually got it right. Look at that. Fukushima. That's exactly what it was, Fukushima. Hang on. So you see the CND, which is the anti-nuclear weapons group, and a peace sign? But when you look at that spelling, that's totally different looking. That's totally different looking, the way they start each letter. They start each letter with like a, like a big... Whereas this one is like a really smooth... Now, sperm whales eat squid. Dead humpback whale washes up the same area of Nova Scotia coast where scores of fish are mysteriously dying 2016. Fishery officials say it's too early to say whether the whale's death is related to mysterious fish kills that appear to have spread to new species. And that one is deflated, right? So, but then we find out we're talking about dead herring, starfish, clams, lobsters. Uh, the starfish, the clams, and the lobsters are bottom dwellers. That's where a lot of the radioactive fallout settles down. And, the, and all of them are scavengers. The clams, in, in particular, are filter feeders. They're going to biomagnify radiation 125,000 times more than a fish would because they're filter feeders. Like, like the herring, the, the clams will bioaccumulate at 125,000 times more. And starfish use the seawater as blood. 
the same as we would use blood. And so they're extremely vulnerable, and that's why we've seen them wiped out on the research expeditions that we carried out for six years, four to five months a year. Officials tested for infections and diseases and toxins and predators and broader quality issues, but all coming back negative. But they won't look at, f none of them ever, under any circumstances, will look at the nuclear. This article is more than six years old. I think this is 2016. We'll find out in a second. Rare fin whale stranding in North Folks puzzles scientists. Rare, rare fin whale puzzles. They're normally found on the south or west coast of UK, not on the east coast. Well, they're over there because obviously that one starved to death. You can tell just looking at it how they're generally a, a pretty skinny looking creature. That's emaciated. And that's emaciated. Look at the tail. That's incredible emaciation we're talking about. This death comes after a spat of whale strandings where dozens have died in other parts of the North Sea. You never get them in the North Sea, so what's it doing here? We have no idea. Well, it's emaciated. It's, it's in desperation, it went somewhere else to find food. Whales are dying off the coast of Kiri, and no one seems to know why. At least three dead mink whales have been spotted off the Dingle Peninsula in three months. Recorded the entire stranding data database, which goes back to 2000. <laughs> In just three months. Uh, so, like, there, there is a, a well documented record of boat strikes of about 25 a year. So, a lot, when you go back pre nuclear history or pre Fukushima, that's generally what you're going to see. Post Fukushima, oh, I've never seen it before. Another whale died off the coast of Down earlier this week. The Irish and whale and dolphin group. And I just, I absolutely hate their guts. I hate their guts. There you go, I said it. I hate their guts. I'm sick of those people. You couldn't see any obvious causes of death. There was a couple of other animals hurt. Hurt. You don't really hear that very often, that that uh, framing of that narrative. So there were at least four, as many as six, when you considered whale washed in St. John's Point. Well, why wouldn't you consider it? There's 28 dolphins in January and February of the year, the highest level since records began in 2000. So their records in the United Kingdom only began in 2000. We had a story there earlier where he said it was the highest number in a century. They've only been keeping records since 2000. I just got no time for any academics or journalists, particularly journalists. I can't even stand them now. After all the lies, it's, it's absurd. We've had at least four mink whale strands, which is a phenomenal amount for just this area. And this, this is the common denominator. We hear this all the time from all over the world, post Fukushima. It's very unusual to have so many deaths in the one small area in the space of 10. No, it's not unusual. It's never happened before. Inside the CSI probe in 2000, as if these people are anywhere near those abilities. It's ludicrous to suggest that they are. In the dozens of unexplained whale strandings, in the beginning of 2016, at least 30 sperm whales stranded on European beaches. I showed you quite a few of them earlier in the show, right? The jury is still out on one of the team's biggest mysteries. The, in 2016, saw the largest ever mass strandings of sperm whales on UK European beaches. As many as 31 whales washed up in the North Sea. Shores during a six week period is the biggest unusual mortality event in the region in several hundred years. But our records only go back to 2020 or 2000, rather. And they go back 23 years. It's the biggest unusual mortality event in several hundred years. 
I've been keeping records for since 22, the year 2000. To have the number strand in that short space of time is highly unusual. No, it's never happened. Right? They change the narrative so they can leave doubt in your head. But you can't move these whales like that, so they all pile up there in the same spot. They had not starved to death. <laughs> We've seen that a lot over the last few years, haven't we? Yeah, they're emaciated, but they didn't starve to death. That, that whale is emaciated. Look at the peanut head on them, for goodness sakes. See that peanut head where the head concaves in? That's not usual. And when you see these tails, look how... Uh, well, look at their spine going up, right? There's no fat there protecting it. It's just a bone is sticking out. So they died of starvation. Otherwise, why would you say they had not starved to death? Now they say it's difficult for them to feed. In other words, they starved to death. They're not starved to death. They were lost and hungry, but, you know, they, they didn't starve to death. They, they had difficult for them to find something to feed, but they didn't starve to death. They were lost and hungry, but they didn't starve to death. The obvious candidate is sonars and seismic exploration, climate change, and shit on a stick. Movement of the prey, some very... Uh, like the Halon Collider. In other words, everything but lost and hungry and, and they couldn't find anything to feed. But really, right, they, they, it was such a dishonest story and it's from the United Kingdom. That's what we're used to from the United Kingdom. They really, and uh, uh, United Kingdom and Australia media are just unbelievable evil, hateful people in the universities and the medias. Everyone's got a theory, and at this stage we're still keeping an open mind, except, you know, we're not keeping an open mind. Two workers dead in BC waters, Canada, part of an endangered population. 20-year-old, a dead female calf, because you don't have many females, that's a major blow. They, they had starved to death, right? The killer whales out in B.C. are dying of starvation. They say, well, they don't get their Chinook salmon, right? They'll go on a hunger strike and won't eat nothing else. But the estimates were they would have a 1,000 beckles a kilogram by 2016. And guess what year that is? 2016. So they got leukemia. Alaska seabird die-off investigation hindered by data gaps. Something is amiss in the food web. Common MERS. Now they dive 600 feet all day. An unusual warm water may have an effect on the four each fish and zooplankton eaten by small fish. MERS themselves will eat larger zooplankton such as krill, a small crustacean that floats in the water column. Uh, they're migratory, right? They feed an uh, incredible diversity of migratory animals. Common MERS are large by seabird standards and can, and can weigh more than two pounds and they routinely live 20 to 25 years. Which is really impressive, isn't it? Not anymore, of course, but the Alaska population is estimated 2.8 million that breeds at 230 colonies. And so when I was on the ocean, I was on the ocean during this period, that's why we're doing this show in particular, these stories I didn't get, majority of them I didn't cover because I was on the ocean on research expeditions for many months at a time when we were coming home. And due to Fukushima radioactive fallout, we were doing species counts and the coastline was stripped. It's stripped. There was nothing. If you shipwreck, you'll starve to death for sure. No maybes. The Alaska population estimated 28 million, but in 2016, the total number, because we have the fortunate ability of hindsight, was around 1.4 million that they estimated had died, which is half the population. And they died of starvation. Die-offs have been documented before, but not to this degree. During the first 10 days of January, researchers counted 17,000 MERS on beaches and 850 more in vessel surveys. Only about 15% of the carcasses will reach the shores 
and only a fraction of the beaches are surveys, so that the deaths would be in the hundreds of thousands. Now they admit it was uh, about 1.4 million, and there was uh, around the equal number of Cassini Ocklets died in that same period. I was on the research expeditions up in that area at that time. I didn't find them. I didn't find any, let alone them. What's unprecedented about the die-off is the first spatial extent of this die-off, which covers most of the southern Alaska, and it represented an extended period of time. This went on for about five years. In more than three decades of monitoring birds in the barrens, we never had complete reproductive failures before, and it wasn't just there. 8,000 murs washed ashore by early winter starving, starving, starvation. Not only in near shore water, but as far inland as Fairbanks, 360 miles from salt waters. And MERS, like they have a migratory route. It's, it's like a magnet in one way where it's built into them and they can't change courses. They're compelled to do the migratory route is basically what I'm trying to uh, articulate. So f they were finding them 360 miles inland in fresh water and we're talking thousands in freshwater ponds showing up dead. And when they'd done a survey, they were all emaciated. And body size, because they lived to be about 25 years of age, body size measurements suggest many were sub-adults, less than five years old. The emaciated, emaciated, the starving, the the. You know, emaciated is you got no, you got no muscle mass, no body fat, and nothing in your stomach. Have been mostly empty. So they tried to say the MERS were already struggling, and the hurricane force storms of December could have prevented them from foraging, according to researchers. But I've been out there in pre Fukushima, on the ocean, on anchorages and working sheltered areas during hurricanes, by the way. Now, it wasn't unusual for me to go diving in 50 mile per hour winds. We would just anchor to an island with shelter and dive right there and stay there. When the wind storm broke, then we would move our load for pickup by the packers. Packers would come out and pick up your loads. And so the birds will dive in that weather. That's their environment. You know, to suggest that MERS can't handle a storm. And I, I've heard this in many species that live in the ocean where whales died because of stormy weather. It's, it's absurd. It's, it's a ridiculous. It's, it's a disgusting and it's a despicable lie. Dead MERS pile up on the beaches. They're beautiful birds. If you go look up bird, a healthy... Uh, a mer, common mers, and they they dive 600 feet all day long. They feed on anchovies and squids and sardines and krill, you know, small creatures, seven, eight, nine inches. Something is killing the Alaska common mer. In the summer of 2015, they suffered a complete collapse of the colonies and failed to breed, and almost all of the dead birds are mers. But in 2017 and 2018, this story was still going strong. And there was all the shearwaters, the kittiwakes, the the oclets. There was all kinds of species, ducks, and many, many seagulls. Many, many different species were showing up with the same attribute. Many of the murders appeared emaciated and starved to death. Not only are they starving, they're not even breeding. Of course they're not, because... We have complete reproductive failures, which is really rare for MERS, because they can dive so deep, right? They dive 600 feet, and they can do it all day long. And they're finding live and stranded birds in yards, on rivers, and lakes. So... Let's just hang on, because i got a good way of explaining it, but... Because we got so much material, I don't really want to stop. But I, I, I feel I really need to articulate, because we're talking about the birds. and So what you're looking at is radioactive fallout. The top left-hand corner was at 20 days. That's only based on venting. 
uh, I didn't get a number. Hang on. We're at 1640, right there. Okay, so I launched research expeditions and covered from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska year after year after year. And I was doing the ocean, birds, whales, everything else, but I was also doing the tidal zones. And so well, we got the beak one up. So the species I'm going to show you, these disappeared. Uh, they've never come back. The species to your left are the before and after pictures to the right, or post Fukushima to the right. So when birds were flying the coastline, normally they would see the left, but now it's the right. There's nothing left. Right. So to the left, there was always something for them to feed on. You know what I mean? But to the right, there's nothing left post Fukushima. So normally the ocean would look like, like this. It was just wonderful. Instead now, it's like the right. And so I've done these research species counts expeditions. The species, they're gone. So normally the birds can land there and get some food. Right? The common murs and all the other species. And this is true. This would have been the exact way it looked in Alaska all the way down to California. And what I've done was I done this year after year, sometimes twice a year, for four to five to six months a year, to see if the species to your left recovered. And the only thing we got in common was perpetual pulse radioactive fallout event from Fukushima covered the whole planet. The tidal zones are very vulnerable because they're exposed twice a day. And the stuff that washes down from the interior ends up on the co coastlines. And so you can see these big plumes covering your continent. Stuff that washes down to the coastlines is where the, the breeding, the nursery is to. And the diversity there was around 7,000 visible species in the tidal zones. They were wiped, they were exterminated. They were wiped out. You'll never see them to the left again. And we notice, you know, I'd done the research expeditions in desperation and there's no way to misinterpret the the data. It's an extinction event. This is an extinction event. So let's go back to where I left off. We we're talking about dead mirrors pile up on the beaches. You counted eight thousand dead mirrors on a one mile stretch of beach on a pond. No, the numbers are totally off the chart. The whole region is having through the roof numbers in the last couple of days. 8,000 dead MERS. This is considered just impossible. And they were emaciated. That day we did 115, 18 MERS and those starfish. I was really upset. So the starfish, we've we seen that in real time. All those starfish said local coast volunteers reporting similar numbers in different surveys. 400 to 600 birds, 800 birds per kilometer. Uh, per people have seen the dead birds in the woods above the high tide lines, floating with debris in the harbors, even on the roads in the communities. Knee deep in birds. Well, scientists don't know what's causing them to starve. A few birds of other species, like the Cassini oculus, the guillemots, Mots have been found dead, but the vast majority are the common MERS. There's no evidence of toxins in the common MERS carcasses. Despite the fact they were trying to blame it, vehemently trying to blame it, on domoic acid in a lot of medias, and it took several years to get the results and turned out to be negative for domoic acid. But it was enough to raise doubt in a lot of people's mind, and they knew it was going to be negative. None of the MERS have avian influenza. If they did, other bird species would also be dying. And for scavengers like eagles, crows, and ravens, the MERS appear safe to eat. There were no reports of scavengers getting sick. It's very, and back then it was pretty rare to hear for them to invoke avian influenza. Now they're trying to blame it on everything, foxes, otters, everything. Trees, they're trying to blame it on rocks dying. 
above average in Washington, Oregon. The age of dead MERS found varied with younger birds found as well as older MERS, and they can live up to 40 years. The big question is the MERS die off is why did the birds starve to death? Is it the prey base, the krill, the forage fish, things like the sand lance, the herrings that have rearranged themselves? No, they were wiped out by Fukushima. And to suggest that the warming oceans caused the prey to swim deeper, making it harder for the MERS to find fish, is not true because they dive 600 feet all day with ease. Thousands of birds found dead along the Alaska shoreline. These are all, again, we're still in 2016. The dead birds, common MERS that had starved. And then finding 8,000 in a freshwater pond. They don't go anywhere near freshwater. Freshwater is not part of their habitat. It's an order of magnitude larger than any rec records that they're aware of. And so, because back then, uh, a lot of the speculation was pretty honest. Not 100%, but a lot of it was pretty honest. It's hard to know how many birds have died because Alaska is so big. There's so many remote areas. But the official numbers were about 1.4 million, half of the entire population. And the vast majority of the birds died due to starvation. And a uh, test on 100 carcasses, all were emaciated. Suggest the vast majority, it, it wasn't true, it's all of them. So the temperature of the water, which they dubbed the blob, and we ridiculed them of, um, when back in 2016, when during that whole period. When I was on land, we used to uh, run into that narrative a lot, which was a garbage can diagnosis, right, to just junk it like that. 150,000 penguins presumed dead. We covered that back then in 2016. Giant iceberg blocks access to food. But a lot of academics suggest they would have they would have just migrated to somewhere where there was food. They weren't necessarily, uh, you know, this, you're talking about a huge chunk of ice. You're talking t plus 2,000 square miles, right? But you're also talking about a species that have survived, that that is its environment in the first place, right? Bird Studies Canada concerned about dead seabirds in the Pacific North, uh, Northwest, again, 2016. This was the Cassini Ocklets. It was over a million of them for sure that they admitted to washed up dead. Recent die-offs are believed to be caused by starvation, shortage of prey. Starvation was found to be the cause. 8,000 common murs dead on Whittier, Alaska Beach, starving to death. Alarm over dolphin and porpoise deaths in the Black Sea. According to report, 108 dolphins were found dead along the country's Black Sea coast since January, twice the number found in all of 2015. And 2015 is um, a record pre-Fukushima. According to Popov, 35 dead porpoises were found washed up on local beaches just one weekend this month. And claims were over 300 dolphins and porpoises recorded for 2015. Rare black whale discovered in the Pacific. I was just trying to figure out that. How little humans know about the deep, fast oceans. Well, it's too late. We destroyed that Pacific and now the rest of the planet because of Fukushima perpetual radioactive fallout. Uh, let me see here. I found cooker cutter bite marks. Too many whales, males being born to BC. So, like when you have nuclear accidents, they do uh, sex ratio studies on humans in local areas or even far away uh, to see if there's more males than females being born, which is emblematic of radiation poisoning. Too many males being born in BC killer whale population 
as another female calf is found dead. And this is the one where sh the killer whale carried the calf around uh, on its nose for several days, or even a week, was it? I was headed down from Alaska on the boat, it, and it took me a long time to get back home. But I got home for, it took them like three weeks off, because I was gone since January or something. The high number of male babies in a group of killer whales living off the coast is cause for concern. Only one of the calves have been confirmed as a female, which could spell trouble for the whales. And yet another baby whale is male. So if you got all males, you can't reproduce. And Balcom, he died last year, right? Normally it's a 50-50 uh, ratio for babies, males and females is 50-50. Researchers looking at why there's so many more males in the latest. Well, they estimated that the killer whales would have a thousand becquels a kilogram from Fukushima. And we have that stuff here somewhere. Necropsy of a beached whale find no clues to the cause of death. And humpback whales live for 60 years or more and usually die of natural causes, not of starvation or anything else. As many as 30 mammals have washed up on the shores of Holland, Germany, northern France, and the UK since January. Mass sperm whale deaths across Europe leave scientists stumped. So there are definitely a lot more honest back in those years than there are in the current years because it, it just kept getting worse and worse since. From January to early, well, since Fukushima, 30 of the magnificent creatures died on the coast of US Germany all bachelors are juvenile males. Now all the strands appear to have ceased, yet scientists are hardly any clearer on what caused so many of the huge whales to die. They're far from their usual hunting habitat. Well, they eat squid, right? And so, and they can plunge 6,500 feet preying on squid. So something, something happened to the squid population is why they showed up starved at it, obviously. Some of the whales have revealed some deals such as plastic fish netting being found in the stomach. Again, right, uh, they don't eat plastic if there's food. They're eating plastic because desperation. Until we get a clear result from the autopsy, it's just speculation about the plastic. And if, if it was a significant amount, they would have said it died of plastic, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have just, they put that in there to cause seeds of doubt for the nuclear industry. Large numbers of whale beaching at the same time is likely to occur again in the coming decades. Why would they say that? Because they starved to death, Dana, that's right. Whale spotted in New York Harbor. Well, how many died in New York Harbor last year? Was it 15 or something? In 2016, it was considered like, wow, there's a whale in the harbor, folks. Unbelievable. Nine blue whales die after getting trapped off our coastline, where I'm currently to. They got crushed by ice. And it happens where I'm to. We get 200 miles of pack ice. and. If the wind is not pushing it all on land from you know two hundred mile of ice, so when the ice pushes it, it just it's rubbing. You got you know chunks of ice as big as houses rubbing against each other, then the whales can't survive in it. But they're not supposed to be there in that time of the year, right? They're supposed to be in warm water that time of year, not in the freezing ocean that time of the year. See. Japan likens anti-whaling campaign to attempt to ban the kimono, which is a traditional outfit worn by the Japanese females. So how can you liken anti-whaling to not to not agreeing with somebody's traditional dress code? You can't equate that that way. Again, majority these are 2016 or 2015 headlines. Some are going to be 2014. So Japan justifies killing hundreds of whales as research. 
but they sell it in uh, vending machines in the schools and cafeterias and restaurants. But to suggest that the anti-whalers are so trivial as equal to banding Komodo perhaps two or three times in their, to the women that wears them two or three times in their lifetimes. What well, if another country says only a small number of women can wear Komodos? No, this is not, this is not about, this is about actual species, you ridiculous weirdo. A thousand mainly mink whales a year for scientific research. And then where's the research? How come I don't, f I can't find her? Why do you need to kill a thousand and why does the meat from the slaughter end up in open markets? And how much money are you going to make off these things? It's not really a lot of money when you think about it. If you charge two bucks a pound, about $26 million for usable. What do you need? The quota is significantly lower to 850 uh, mink whales targeted each year until Australia legally challenged at The Hague for a temporary halt on it. 58 foot long whale washes up in Long Island Beach. A finback. Pregnant orca was starving and carrying a dead fetus. She separate uh, releases video of dead whales in Japanese ships. I twittered them um, all kinds of pictures of Fukushima. All they done was blocked me. Japanese whaling crew eaten alive by killer whales, 16 dead. Remember, we covered this uh, in 2014 when it came out. It's a great story. It's not true, but too bad. Nine killer whales die in rear mass beach stranding in New Zealand. So it's not just pothead whales or, or pilot whales, rather. It's all kinds of species, right? Sin whale, the sperm whales, killer whales, humpbacks, gray whales. There's nine killer whales. Why, why would nine killer whales, and we, uh, we've never seen that in history, why would nine killer whales wash up on the same beach? I've never heard of anything close to that in killer whale die-offs before, I don't think. I don't know, because we cover so much for so many years. I think it would stand out. Piece of shit media. There's the last people you're going to trust is the idiot government. It's a rare mass stranding on the New Zealand coast. No, it's never happened there before. It's not a rare one. It's never happened before. Beluga whale population in St. Lawrence is on a catastrophic path. This is 2014, three years after Fukushima. A catastrophic trajectory we're observing. We don't know exactly what the cause is for that. And the only way this population can reverse its trajectory would be to increase the survival rate and birth rate. And what we're observing for the last couple of years, post Fukushima, is totally the opposite. Japan killed 30 mink whales first hunt since UN court order. This is 2014, I think. Since UN court order, UN court, United Nations controls our whole planet. And nobody, nobody has any rights or freedom unless they're given to them by UN. More whales being hit by ships along the US coast. Three strikes in a week. And that's the Sen whale, same as the 337 they found in Chile. And I could have been dead when they hit it. 
Uh, usually it's pretty hard to hit a live whale. I worked in places with up to 8,000 whales around me at a top day after day during the seasons. The usual rate of a whale strike by a ship is about one every few weeks compared with three in the past few weeks. Uh, that works out about 25 a year, if one every two weeks, for instance. But the total number worldwide is about 1,200 recorded since 1978. Service surveys from 75 through 2002 found 292 records of confirmed or possible ship strikes to large whales. So there's over 10,000 dead gray whales in the last five years. Um, the majority of them are confirmed to be emaciated. 25 pilot whales found dead near Marco Island, 2014. The deceased mammals were discovered two days after death of eight pilot whales 40 miles north. And a month after 50 whales were stranded in Everglades, their cause of death has still not been determined. But the number of strandings in the last year is higher than what scientists typically see. So that we're not talking about many whales when you compare it post Fukushima. It is unusual and something we're looking at. Necropsies performed on eight whales, the polar whales, showed they had empty stomachs. They died of starvation. 2014 and around 2017 they stopped reporting on the health of the pilot whales because they were always emaciated or, or empty stomachs aka starved to death. The whales that died in the Everglades also had empty stomachs. Wow that's quite a coincidence isn't it? The 50 whales they found stranded in the Everglades had empty stomachs. So that was the ones that were in the Everglades too. The 50 whales. So they stopped checking on the health of the whales because that becomes a pattern, right? 16 females and 9 males. They prefer 20 miles offshore in cold water. Once they get close to shore, they become dehydrated and disoriented. You don't get dehydrated and disoriented. You're, you're a whale. This is your environment, for God's sakes. It's like saying if, if I walk around the block, I become disoriented and can't find my way home. The, the autopsy showed they died of starvation. May are unwilling to let dead sperm whale rot on Newfoundland shores. Just far... You're talking about, and what year was that? 2014. Here's somebody sliced through the whale's belly. The only reason you're dead is you're going to see what they were eating, right? Seven dead sperm whales found dead on a beach in South Australia. And sperm whales hadn't been seen there in over 25 years. Finding seven on the beach, you can almost see the peanut head on that fella, right? It's extremely rare mass stranding. They had uh, 14 last year in the one spot. Or this early this year, was it? We covered it. Found himself caught in low tide. Uh huh. Six of the whales were already dead, and the other one died. Another theory, which you should keep to yourselves, is the whales went there because to help a sick whale, the pod followed in. If that was true, there wouldn't be any more sperm whales on the planet. And we would see strandings everywhere, all the time, pre-Fukushima, not just post-Fukushima. And whales hadn't even been seen there for 25 years. Two pilot whales die after they're found stranded in Puerto Rico. Four polar whales die after a pot of 13 washed up in Donegal Beach. I believe 
Is that Scotland or United Kingdom? But that's the 13th stranding reported on the shores that year. So there was 13 of these incidences, and that's Ireland, rather, that year. What's the date, I wonder, on this story? It's 2014, I'm assuming. There'd only been one live stranding in the country before it is pre-Fukushima. Post-Fukushima, they had 13 in one year of strandings. The live stranding of pods of polar whales are not unknown, but relatively rare. With one of the last major incidences in Ireland in November 2010, when 33 polar whales live stranded and died at Ruthland Island. So there is a history, we know that, we acknowledge that, we've talked about it and covered it many times over the many, many years we've been doing this. And the Irish Whale and Dolphin Group, who I completely disrespect, have nothing but contempt for these people. There has only been one live stranding in the country, pre... So how can you have one live stranding um, pre-Fukushima, but in November 2010 there was 33? They must be the one they're talking about, I suppose. Nepcropsy would have had 13 in that single year versus one in their entire history. Nepcropsies began for 25 polar whales found dead. 16 males, 9 females. Cat parasites found in western Arctic belugas. Well, how the hell does a cat parasite end up in beluga whales in the friggin' Arctic? And I'm blaming on climate change? I, I just... The breakdown of the ice barriers is believed responsible for the die-off of 406 gray seals near Cape Breton Island in 2012. What happened was, because that, that's the year after Fukushima, what happened was the radioactive fallout in that place where there's ice and snow will settle in the ice and snow. And when that melts, you have a pulse event, which is what they're talking about. That's a pulse event we're talking about right there. 400 dead seals on Hay Island. No idea why they died. Whale pod stranded. Pod of sperm whales found dead after being stranded in southern Australia. The seven whale was later seen seven kilometers from the pod. Stranded. AKA dead. Stranded longfin polar whales on excess Exix River had starved to death, says the experts. Died in very poor nutritional conditions. They died of starvation. So, and let's get a look at that. And so, by 2017, they stopped reporting on the health of pilot whales. They would only report on the death. And they wouldn't, they would always say, oh, well, they always strand in groups. But the majority of the die-offs recorded, and the vast majority at that, recorded in Australia, New Zealand, are post-Fukushima, not pre-Fukushima. Like, I think it's around 4,000 dead uh, whales and, and dolphins. And almost all of them, except for a small fraction, is post-Fukushima nuclear meltdowns after the meltdowns. Dead whale found on Uruguay Beach lifted into a truck and hauled to a burial site. It said no signs of injuries and likely lost its bearings, but it doesn't work that way. It's so ludicrous to suggest that the whale lost its bearings. We see that an awful lot, don't we? Officials say the whale showed no signs of injuries. And that's because it most likely starved to death. Pregnant killer whale starved to death. And that's what an emaciated killer whale, because it's not a great picture, but you would notice the peanut head if you had a really good picture, malnourished, malnourished.
perished. The question is, why did the fetus die? And why are we having so much trouble with reproductive success in the population? Restoring a plentiful food source must be a priority. Well, typically, killer whales will eat around 350 species. But Mal uh, Balco is claiming that they only eat Chinook salmon. But if they run into Chinook salmon, how come they won't eat something else? This is a, uh, a dolphin, I believe. A two-headed whale? You know, yeah, gray whale calf. I'm sorry. This is a two-headed gray whale calf conjoined, which of course it is two-headed gray whale. It's amazing you made it to that uh, stage, isn't it? i never seen anything like it before. Endangered giant leatherback turtle washes up dead on the same beach as seven sperm whales three weeks earlier. They say they got nothing in common. They said they washed up dead on the same beach. These whales are clearly emaciated. You can really see the peanut head behind his shoulder to the left. Sperm whale spotted off Oregon, OC Coast, uh, Orange County, I think it is, coast in rare sighting. Fifty of the whales, sperm whales, were seen off the coast, which experts say is a rare one. They're usually a tropical or subtropical waters. Sperm whales is a sight never before seen off the coast of Orange County. I've been counting whales for 35 years and never seen a large group like this ever. Uh, they weigh up to 45 tons and eat a ton of squid a day. So if you eat a ton of squid a day, <coughs> and your food source, hang on, my throat is dry, uh, then your food so uh, source is killed off by radioactive fallout. What would you expect? Well, you expect to find a whale showing up dead and emaciated everywhere, Dana. So what's happening? Well, they're showing up dead everywhere. They're not supposed to be in those types of water. They're like warm, tropical. You stay at the surface and die for 20 minutes to an hour and a half. They're socializing. They're rolling, sticking their heads. It was extraordinary. I don't know of any large group we have ever socializing like this. I've never seen anything like it. And nobody I know in Southern California has. Dead sperm whale surfaces in Munas. What was the date on that? 2014. Two dead sperm whales wash up in a small view in Southeast Unts in Shetland on Sunday. They both came ashore at the same place is strange. It is. So there's definitely a big problem with the squid because 2014, 2015, 2016 we've seen here tonight just if you only look at those three years it's symmetrical die-offs. Mystery deaths of Gulf of Alaska whales trigger a stepped-up investigation. And how many times have you heard this narrative? And how many times have you heard the result of the investigation? Oh, that's right, we've never. The die off in the Gulf of Alaska is now can classified as an unusual mortality event. The death toll that year was 30 whales. And what was the date? September 28, 2016. So now we're doing 2016 again. 
11 fin whales, 14 humpbacks, 1 gray whale, and 4 unidentified. Additional whale deaths in British Columbia, 4 humpbacks, 1 sperm whale. Only one dead Alaska whale has been sampled, and tests came back negative for domoic acid. Which again, domoic acid is, because we've seen this a lot over the last decade, that's a garbage can diagnosis. Uh, right, we can officially say it now. After all, uh, like we've co we've been covering this ten years straight, so this is not a conjecture. Mysterious outbreak is killing Arctic Alaska ringed seals. Scores more are sick and some so ill the skin lesions bleed when they are touched. That's emblematic of radiation. The animals are important subsistence food for the natives. And so when I was going up the coastline, I was stopping these native communities to get fresh water or fuel or groceries or whatever. And the first thing I would ask everybody, how bad is cancer lately? Is there any, is there like uh, unusual cancers? And you just see them like, like you hit them, like you come up and slap them or something. They just, wow, how did you know that, right? And because I'm seeing it in every other native community. And and, and the native, a lot of these native communities are very impoverished, right? And if you go to the grocery store, one of the problems I was running into was the majority of the grocery stores are stocked with food from the dollar stores from in the cities. You go, the, the owners go to the cities and they load up on dollar food. It costs them a dollar bag of rice, a dollar for this, a dollar for that. And they bring it back to the native community and charge four dollars or six dollars. And you see the, the owners, they got big boats, big beautiful trucks if they got roads in these towns. They got uh, houses and all kinds of this and all kinds of that. And how do you break that cycle? And the food from the dollar shop is surplus. And a lot of it's not free, like the shampoo and the soap. A lot of it's very questionable. It couldn't be sold in the retail markets. It didn't re meet quality control. And so it was offloaded to the dollar shops in bulk, right? Alaska walrus hauled out on the beach to show symptoms similar to uh, ring seal ailments. In July, the biologists from the North Slope World's Department of Wildlife Management began receiving reports of ring seal hauled out on beaches. Unusual behavioral behavior since the animals usually prefer the waters or ice. Since then, they found at least 100 seals with telltale mangy hair and skin lesions. And we found that ourselves where you were able to come right up to a seal. Wild seals are the most skittish animals you would ever meet normally in the wild. Very difficult to get a picture of them, let alone to get up um, in their eyeball. And I brought the, the boat literally within two feet of them and stopped taking pictures. I was taking pictures, didn't was expecting them to dive off, and didn't realize they had no fur. And on this one rock in particular I'm talking about at that time was uh, three seals. None of them had fur. That was up by Bella Bella on the central coast towards Alaska, in the middle of nowhere. Weakened their immune system, which is typical of radiation, right? Compromise your immune system, makes you more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. Reports of nearly 150 other seals with the illnesses coming from villages outside of Barrow, as well as from, from Kota, Russia, Tuktoyuktok, which is North Canada, village on the northwestern corner of Canada, Tuktoyuktok. I'm scared they might pass it one way or another and the whole ocean could be affected. So they're talking about their word because they don't know what the hell it is, but it's not a virus, they said. They don't know what it is, but they're worried that it might be transferable to the other species and then the whole ocean would would end up dying off because it was there was a catastrophic illness. Blisters and wounds that bleed easily, including those around the nose, eyes, and the rear flippers. That's radiation sickness we're talking about. 
they're not dearthly skinny. It's not like they're dying from malnutrition, but they're not in great body condition. Really? Open sores, pulse, pus, bleeding from skin lesions. It's radiation. It's, that's uh, that's uh, radiation sickness. Dead whales in southern Chile. This is 2015. This is when they originally found 20. They didn't find the rest yet. They had found 20. They're microscopic eaters, right? The largest beaching of its kind. Oh, no, that is the same one. 330 whales. It was actually 337. It was like, I think, 33 skeletons, was it? Yeah, 337 dead whales. And there's many, many areas they still haven't checked. And details on the reasons for the whale's deaths, which are to be revealed to National Geographic magazine. Why, why would National Geographic, R Rupert Murdoch's magazine, be the harbinger of fact? What's killing whales off the BC Alaska coast? So far, four whales identified in what Noah is characterizing as an unusual mortality event for humpbacks, sperm whales, gray whales, fin whales. Don't forget beak whales, don't forget mink whales, don't forget humpback whales, don't forget killer whales, rather. Uh, Alaska researcher investigates fin whales. These are huge animals, by the way. At least nine fin whales discovered floating in waters near Kodiak. It's an unusual and mysterious. Well, look how skinny their tail actually is. Let me zoom in on that. Can I do that anymore? It'll take me a second. Hang on. Hang on. I'll get it. Look how skinny that tail is. Look how, right? But look how skinny that thing actually is. Hold on there, I get it. Look how skinny the tail is compared to the rest of the animal. That's an emaciated tail right there. That's what that is, that, that's emaciated. So far there's no smoking gun in this environmental, what are you calling an environmental mystery if you can't quantify that assertion? Uh, this is 13 years ago, 2010. Whale, washed up whale buried on Newcastle Beach. June 7, 2010, the year before Fukushima. It's the only, the second dead whale I've seen washed up in 20 years. Now you're getting 20 a year. So if you go back to the die-off in Chile, they're baffled to why a mass beaching of protected whales. Well, they've never had, this is the biggest die-off worldwide. And that was, I believe that, I thought it was 2015. May 11, 2015. I was right. I was right. I was wrong. I was right. You were wrong. There, I'll get it to say. Along a 2,400-mile coast, but until now, never seen whales. You've seen other species that washed up or died on the shorelines in the 24-mile coastline, but you've never seen a whale stranding. And they, and they got the biggest one in human history at that time where the people or the species are dependent upon the first species that are going to be affected by radioactive fallout. And that's the microscopic animals. Their diet are these creatures and, and uh, these creatures. Which are very small creatures. And so what happens is you have, you have radioactive fallout covers the entire planet. 
Dan, the microscopic animals are the most vulnerable. But all, all are because Fukushima was a pulse event. This was the tipping point for the global warming, too. If you look at these strange weather events, you won't find them pre-Fukushima, they're post-Fukushima. So we're talking about supercell storms at 200 miles per hour worldwide of typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes. And we're talking, you know, multiple events a year coming ashore in, and there's no communities worldwide that have infrastructure regulatories to build your buildings to withstand 200 mile per hour winds and 250 mile per hour gust because that's what we've been seeing post Fukushima. The releases have been going on nonstop for uh, 80 years from the nuclear industry. And it's kind of hard for the average person to comprehend the enormity of what I'm talking about. It, it's probably impossible, unless you're honest. If you're being honest, then think about this happening every single day. Because that model is only based on venting. It's not based on the actual inventories from the nuclear meltdowns. Because if you put that into the equation, you won't be able to see the outline of Earth. And this stuff never goes away. This is your forever nightmare. I guess that's it. Um... See everybody tomorrow night. Japan is out of control. They're out of control. Nuclear industry is completely out of control. Particularly post Fukushima. They're, they're savage. They've taken over your planet and you better start fighting for it because they're not going to give it back willingly. And you better take it back. Eight million species in the future of humanity is dependent on you. It's on your shoulders, not mine. Mine are heavy enough. Have a great day, have a great night, and have a great morning. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll pick back up on scumbag degenerate nuclear industry. Have a great day, everybody.